Hey everybody, welcome into another Motivation Monday podcast for Monday, April 13th, 2020. It is the second Motivation Monday podcast of the month, so you know what that means. This is the one where I give you a listening recommendation for the month. And this month is one of my favorite records of all time, and also allows us to give a little bit of a tribute to a legendary jazz musician that has passed away recently, and that is McCoy Tyner. And the record that I want you to check out this month is called The Real McCoy. I'm sure a lot of you out there have heard this record, loved this record, but if you haven't, check it out. It is one of the most exciting collections of music that I have ever heard. Now, we're going to be focusing in on one track, my favorite track off the record, but this is a great one to listen all the way through. Uh, Every song on it is basically a masterpiece. Um, So do yourself a favor and just put this record on and listen to it from beginning to end. I think you'll really enjoy the way that this record was put together. So this record came out in 1967, and the personnel on this record is McCoy Tyner, Joe Henderson on tenor saxophone, Ron Carter on bass, and Elvin Jones on the drums. So really just a super group of like some of the most storied musicians that we've ever heard. And 1967, really interesting year in jazz history. Uh, I feel like right around this period of time was when all these contemporary musicians were putting out music that was completely different and very, very individual. So I really appreciate this time in jazz history because you can listen to a lot of records that are coming from completely different places. So just to give you an idea of some of the other records that came out this year, you have Stan Getz putting out Sweet Rain, you've got Archie Shep putting out The Magic of Juju, Jackie McLean put out New and Old Gospel, Roland Kirk put out The Inflated Tear, Miles Davis put out both Miles Smiles and Sorcerer, Duke Ellington released The Far East Suite. John Coltrane released Expression, and this was actually the same year that Coltrane passed away. Wayne Shorter put out Schizophrenia. So if you think about all those records, or some of those records that I just mentioned, they all are so different from each other. And that's something that I really, really appreciate from this period of jazz. But anyway, let's get back to this particular record, The Real McCoy. So the track that I would like you to listen to is called Blues on the Corner. And it is right up there with the song Passion Dance as my favorite track off of the record. Now there's so much interesting content on this particular track that I'm not gonna be able to sort of cover it all here. There's just a few things that I would like you to listen for. Um, And they actually happen during the melody. So one of the coolest things is that Joe Henderson actually really messes up on the melody. And you'll hear it. You'll hear it right away. And that's actually one of my favorite parts of this record, is that there's a lot of warts on this recording. And I actually really appreciate that because it does a couple of things. The first thing that it shows is that Yeah, they could have done takes until they got it all completely perfect, where there are no mistakes. But my guess is that they cared way more about like the emotional content and the solos and the creativity of the particular takes. So when they had those warts on the head or people came in at the wrong time or, you know, somebody messed up the form or something like that, They decided to keep those takes because the solos were so good or the general impact of the entire track, uh, you weren't going to capture that again. So they made a compromise. They said, yeah, well, somebody might have messed up the head or came in at the wrong time, but everything was so incredible and the the take as a whole felt so good that we're just going to put it out. And I think that's a really important thing to think about, right? If you're somebody who obsesses over the smallest mistakes... You know, sometimes that can be a good thing, being a perfectionist, but sometimes you can kind of miss the forest for the trees, right? Like you you might disqualify a certain thing that you want to put out because of one tiny little mistake, but the rest of your content could be the most amazing thing that anybody has ever heard. And most of the time, people aren't even going to notice that mistake. So that's something I really appreciate about this recording. You know, some of the best musicians who have ever played uh, making mistakes 
it also reminds you that even those people are human and that this is a really, really hard form of music to play and that even the pros, the legends, the people that we put on that pedestal as being the best people who ever played jazz, they're capable of making mistakes. And in fact, they make a lot of them. And some of them even make their way onto records. So I really appreciate that. And like I said, it's on other tracks, like uh, people come in in the wrong place, the form gets messed up on this record, but it's still one of my favorite records of all time, just due to that moment that was captured in time, warts and all. Um, this band was just so happening and their music had this crazy energy to it. The mistakes don't matter. In fact, I kind of like the fact that the mistakes are on this record. So those are the few things that I want you to listen to. Oh, wait, there's one more little thing. I want you to check out the way that McCoy harmonizes the melody with Joe Henderson. I think this is just absolutely genius. The stuff that McCoy is actually playing underneath the melody and the way that he's getting around that keyboard and doing these really interesting, very quick harmonizations while Joe's playing. And of course, the solos are ridiculous. Uh, you gotta listen to Elvin Jones play those drums, one of the most swinging drummers who's ever played. Um, but generally, I just want you to try to absorb what's going on on that track, Blues on the Corner. Be a cool one to try to learn too on your instrument. Um, but we'll save that for another transcription challenge. So let me know in the 10 Minute Jazz Lesson Community Facebook group if this is an album that you've ever checked out. Maybe this album is brand new to you. Let me know. I'd be really interested to hear if you've ever uh, experienced this record before I told you about it. Okay, that's about it. Enjoy your listening this week. Enjoy your practicing this week. And we will talk to you soon. Have a great week, everybody. Bye.